Well, good evening, church family. Good to see you. Glad you are here. We've been walking through the, the names of God on uh, Wednesday evening. I've created a, a slide. Some people have asked uh, how I am spelling some of these names. And so uh, we, we've got a few slides so that you can see, you can take notes. Elohim and Yahweh, you, uh, you probably got those. Uh, Adonai, uh, Yahweh Yireh, uh, the God who provides. Um, and then uh, Yahweh uh, Tsaba is where we were last week. Uh, this week, we are going to be in Yahweh Shalom, the name Yahweh Shalom. That is timely, isn't it? Yahweh Shalom. If we had to describe our world in a word, it might be a word like turmoil. It might be one filled with uh, chaos and confusion. Um, that is the state of our world every time we turn on the news. Um, and it stems from the, the panic and the sin inside of mankind. Um, uh, the worst part of uh, turmoil or chaos is whenever it moves within, whenever there is turmoil within. As a people, we continue to move towards that state of increased pain and anxiety, deep hurt and depression. By every metric, we are in a mental health crisis in our world and in our culture. So, Yahweh Shalom, the Lord is peace. The Lord is peace is a very timely word for us this evening. Scripture has much to say about peace, uh, but did you know there is only one spot in the Old Testament, in the Scripture, where this uh, uh, combined conjunction name is used, Yahweh Shalom, and it is in Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6, you may be familiar, is our story of Gideon. Let me quickly, quickly give you the context of Judges. As Israel enters into the land, you see a cycle of uh, the people's sin. They turn away from the Lord, and then the Lord allows the oppressor to come and to oppress them and to win battles. And Israel sits underneath this oppression, and it causes them to, to cry out to God. And as they cry out to God, they see and recognize their sin, and they repent, and they cry out to God. And then God sends them a rescuer, a redeemer who comes and saves the day. Um, and then at the end of that, as, as the yoke of slavery is thrown off, they are like, we will never sin again. And then the next generation comes along and does the exact same thing. And you have this entire cycle. So as our scene opens in Gideon chapter 6, we are in the midst of one of those cycles. It says that Israel disobeyed God. And God allowed Midian to come in and to oppress them. And as our scene opens, our hero, his name is Gideon, and he is threshing out wheat in a wine press. Now, a wine press is a hole in the ground, but you're supposed to thresh out wheat on a hilltop, okay? But Gideon is hiding from the enemy. Why? Because Midian has a cycle where what they would do is they would allow Israel to farm and cultivate and then as soon as it was harvest time, they would come in with dominant army and forces and they would take all of their stuff. They had whipped them so many times in battle that Israel was petrified. They were afraid. They were living in the caves um, and they are doing everything that they can to hold on to their resources. Gideon has lost multiple brothers in the battle. Okay, here he is in the wine press trying to hold on to the little bit of food that they have, always looking over his shoulder. You know how anxious he is? That the little bit that he has is going to be taken. They are deeply war-torn people. He's lost his brothers. Their family has been torn apart. Think of all of that in the midst of this situation. 
And so uh, Gideon, hiding for fear, always looking over his shoulder, he has no peace. There is no peace in the land, and there is no peace internally. And we find in in, uh, verse 12 that an angel of the Lord appears to Gideon. And when the angel of the Lord appears, he says to him, the Lord is with you, O valiant warrior. The Lord is with you. Gideon's reply is, what do you mean the Lord is with me? Look around. Doesn't look like the Lord is with me. Okay? I have heard promises uh, about how the Lord rescued us out of Egypt and how the Lord provided miracles and mightily, but I look around and I don't see any of that. In fact, what I see is that the Lord has abandoned us. That tells you the state of mind where Gideon is. And the angel of the Lord looks right at him and says, you are going to set your people free. Gideon says, how can that be? My family is small. We are nothing. And I am the youngest of my brothers that's left, right? Like, like how could this be? Who am I in order to be able to do this? And at this moment, Gideon asked the angel for a sign. And he says, hold on. Let me go prepare an offering for you and bring it back. And when he brings the offering back, the angel of the Lord took the end of his staff, this is in verse 21, and fire sprung up out of the rock and consumed the offering, okay? And then the angel of the Lord looked at Gideon and said, peace to you, do not fear, you shall not die. And then Gideon built an altar right there to the Lord, and he named it Yahweh Shalom. The Lord is peace. Now, what is peace? The first thing I would tell you and I would remind you that peace is not the absence of conflict. It's not the absence of bullets flying. It's not the absence of conflict. And here is why Gideon is about to be thrust into a major battle with lots of intensity around him. He is eventually going to take his 300 against 135,000, okay? And yet he has said, the Lord is peace. So, Peace is not the absence of conflict. Shalom means wholeness, completeness, having well-being. It's when all priorities are aligned and ordered, that there is harmony and balance and stability and calmness. There is a rest within Once two painters were asked to paint peace, and half a million dollars was put on the line for the winner between these two artists. And so one artist put together and and painted a magnificent mountain with a lake uh, that sat underneath and, and all these beautiful flowers that were around and a magnificent sunset and got to the end of that painting and just with calmness said, yes, This is peace. This will certainly win me the half a million dollars. The other painter painted a dark sky with lightning and thunderstorm. There was violent wind. The trees were blowing. The the entire scene was filled with chaos and fear and everything creeping in. And in the bottom corner, there was a bird perched on a rock with his mouth open and singing. You see, peace is not the absence of conflict. The reality is, is you're supposed to be calm when it's calm. But is there peace when everything is storming and raging around you. John 16, Jesus says, I have spoken these things to you so that you may have peace. 
In the world, you will have tribulation. Take courage. I have overcome the world. Now, if you follow through here, what peace means here to Gideon, catch this, peace means that you know God is with you and God is for you. That's what peace means. The assurance, God is with me and God is for me. He's about to go into battle, 300 against 135,000, and yet he has peace, Yahweh Shalom. Let me close with this final story. A dear saint at my previous church was in her 50s and had some health problems that lingered on and lingered on and ultimately would take her life. She was battling some circulation issues connected with diabetes. And at one point they cut off her toe, but then that wound wouldn't heal. And then they cut off her foot, but then that wound wouldn't heal. And slowly we were going up. All of this a process over months, over months. And I would go and I would sit with her and pray with her and try and encourage her. And, and, and there, there was one particular time where, where she said something to me that I'll never forget because she said, She said, Pastor, I'm not afraid of dying. But I told God, I can do anything if I know you're with me. If I know you're with me. So crying, weeping with her, we just prayed for God's peace, for his nearness, for the reality that he is near and that he is for me. Beloved, I cannot promise into wars, into can't promise stable economy, can't promise anything, cannot promise you health that leads beyond your very next breath, that tragedy won't strike on the way home. But I can promise you this, Yahweh Shalom, the Lord is peace. And his nearness, that he is for you. He who did not spare his own son, but sent him as a God who draws near. He is the only one that can offer peace above any and every circumstance. Would you pray with me? Yahweh Shalom. Yahweh Shalom. There is no God like you. You are the eternal one. You are the only one that can say, I am that I am. And yet you are a God who draws near. And you are a God who gives us peace because your nearness is our good. And we cling to you, God. You are the one who is greater than everything we face. And we cling to you. You are our peace. And we praise you that you are a God who brings peace, who satisfies our soul. You satisfy and we praise you. You're the only one that calms the storm. Be still and know that you are God. Yahweh Shalom. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.